Scrooge, sir, how may I help you? This candlestick is like you, useless. Make me another right away. But it's Christmas Eve, sir, and I thought I'd go home and spend some time with my family. All these thoughts of leisurely life are distracting you, Cratchit. I suppose you'll want the entire day off tomorrow as well. Well, if it's not inconvenient, sir. A fine way to pick a man's pocket. Well, I needed my candlestick. So as far as you leaving early, once I have my candlestick, you may go, and it better be a quality candlestick. I'll do my very best, sir. Thank you. Tim, oh, tiny Tim, can you come in here? Yes, Father. I have to get this candlestick done for Mr. Scrooge. He said I can't go home on Christmas Eve until he has one more candlestick. But I'm not allowed to use any more electric. He's just said no more electric. I need you to turn the lathe for me. Could you give that a try and we'll just see how fast you can get it going? Sure. Excellent, Tim, excellent. So Tim, the first thing we need to do is take that blank that we have mounted to the faceplate there and make it perfectly round and four inches in diameter. Then we're going to trim it down in thickness to one and three quarters. So you can start turning any time now, Tim. I'm just going to take my gouge and very lightly smooth that surface off and make it round. And we can use a, an outside caliper to check our diameter. It's still a little big. So we gotta, you got to keep on turning, Tim. Can't, no time to, to stop now. And you can see, Tim, now that as I ran that gouge around there, that surface is just a little fuzzy. So I'm going to take a scraper and go back over and try and smooth that up. So you'll have to start to take the lathe up again, Tim. You can stop now, Tim. Good boy, look at that. Excellent. Now we need to mark off the thickness at one and three quarters. Let me move that around so I can actually see it.
And now we'll take a skew and we'll work that down right to the center and cut all that down so we have exactly the right thickness. You can start up again, Tim. That's perfect, Tim. Now you can stop. And we can take this and head into the drill press and drill the holes for the threads that'll keep the stick on the base. Our next step is to take that blank that we turned and drill. I've got a half inch bit in the drill press and we're gonna drill it down in there about a half an inch to pocket this hole. So unfortunately, Tim, this means you're gonna to have to turn the drill press as well. So anytime you're ready, Tim. Okay, you can stop. Okay, Tim, what we've done is I've switched over to a 3 8 inch bit, which is what we need to be able to tap that hole. So, Tim, fire up that drill press. And I'm gonna line that right up with the center hole that I just did, and I'm gonna bore all the way through my base, nice and slow. Okay, Tim, you can stop. Now we'll take it into the bench and thread the hole. Here we are back at the bench. I've got the face plate locked into my vise and I've got the tap tool here and we're just going to work that down and straight through our, our base. And you're gonna work this just like you would a metal tap, you'll go in then back off and keep going until we get threaded all the way down. I think we're about there. Back that out. And we'll head back to the lathe and turn the profile on the base. All right, now Tim, what, what we're gonna do is just go in here nice and lightly, and we're gonna continue to remove that material until we get exactly the, the shape of the base that Mr. Scrooge wants. And always remember, Tim, you have to readjust your tool rest there every now and then so that you stay close to the work. And you want that last pass to be nice and light so that it leaves a really good surface behind.
We're going to step in about half an inch, maybe nine sixteenths for our second step. And now we want to mark for our upper and lower beads on our base. Take a, take a skew, score that inside line. Turn in a little fillet. And then turn that little bead. Now we do the outer bead. Score the line. Round off the outside. Round up that inside. And now, Tim, you need to sand it nice and smooth or Mr. Scrooge will never accept this. I'll never get home to spend time with the family on Christmas Eve. So, Tim, why don't you get something to drink? I'll finish sanding this up and then we'll get started on the upper part of the stick. Tim, what I've done now is I've set up a chuck into the headstock of my lathe and I've put in a three quarter inch bit and we're going to take our tail stock and use that to feed our blank for our, our candlestick right in there. We need to drill the hole to accept the candle. And the first thing we need to do is use a little bit of tape and we need to drill our hole at about seven eighths of an inch deep. So I'm just going to take a small piece of tape and measure over seven eighths of an inch. A little further, there we go. Seven eighths. And I'm just going to wrap that right around my shank of my drill bit. I'll take my block and I'll take my center and put it right on the center of the tailstock there. Now, Tim, we're going to need you to start up that lathe again. And now I'm just going to actually, this shouldn't need to remove that tool rest. And I set that right in the place on my tailstock and I'm just going to use the hand wheel and slowly advance it until I find the center of my block. Now I'm going to hold on tight. You could always use a clamp on here. And we're going to drill right in until we reach that tape. Keep turning, Tim. Back up a little. All right, I think we've got it. Very good, Tim. You can stop now. What I want to do before we turn on the, the lathe there, Tim, is I want to mark out a little story pole so that I know where all the points are that I need to turn to on my candlestick so that it matches the other one that Mr. Scrooge has. So I'm going to just take a piece of scrap and I'm going to sight right off here. I'm going to mark the top and come down and then mark the first 
second, third, and fourth little dividing points. I'll mark my beads and where my tenon starts. I can even mark where my tenon ends. And I'm just going to mark this where the vase, and I'll put a top up there. So now I can start turning. I'm going to take those lines and square them across a little bit. So I think I'm going to start turning this into a cylinder so that we can actually use that layout stick. Put that on there. Okay, Tim, you can start up the lathe. I'm going to take my skew. Make sure everything's locked down good and solid. I know you're getting tired, Tim. It's, it's hard work turning that lathe that fast. But I'm just gonna take my skew and run along there. Trim it off until I get a nice even cylinder all the way across. Someday when you're better, Tim, you'll be able to do this too. And if you'd like to use a roughing gouge to get this round, that's fine too. Sounds fairly round. So now I'll take that story pole, lay it, line it right up with the top edge of my turning, transfer all those marks. And mark them all off. And this gives me all the high and low points of the stick as I turn along in there. So the next step is to start to take my skew or a parting tool whatever you like to use, and start to get down to all of those low points of my, my turning. Okay, Tim, you can turn on the lathe. So you can see it, what I'm doing here is I'm using the skew, laying right on the flat, and I'm scribing in and severing the fibers, and then I'm going back and cleaning them, cleaning them out, trying to get closer to the final diameter here. and I can start to shape up that vase a little bit. I'm gonna start about an eighth of an inch off the end. Start to come in and what that's gonna do is it's gonna open up some space right in here 
where I can get in there and make that flat a little tinier. So I can then get back in here. And we want to go down to about a half an inch, maybe five eighths of an inch in diameter there. That's almost where I want to be. And the lower one we want to have up at around 11 sixteenths. Compare that to what I've already turned for Mr. Scrooge before. And I can see that I'm still a little large on that one diameter. So I'll pull it in some more. Let's come down in and do that taper. Yes, I know, Tim. I'm hurrying as quickly as I can. You're getting tired, I'm sure. And then this section looks like it's, oh, about 3 16 of an inch larger than this point here. So I'm gonna take that straight down. Take my gouge. Turn in a nice little cove. And my skew. And do the bead up on top. Take my gouge back again. Put that nice little cove right in there beneath the vase. Next step, I'm going to start a little bit on that tenon. And the next thing I want to do first is go back in and straighten that up a little bit. That's good. Set my calipers right to the diameter of that bottom ring. And we're going to take that whole little segment right down to that, that diameter.
which looks to be about seven eighths. Maybe 13 sixteenths. There we go. Almost done, Tim. So I'm going to take my layout stick. Drop those lines back on there. And now we got to turn them into beads and coves. So score my bottom bead. Cut in the flat. Score the upper bead, which is actually a single bead with two flats. So I'm going to cut those in a little better. There we go. Take that diameter down some. And now I'll take my gouge, turn that little cove in between the two beads. Looks good. Take my skew and round over those beads. That one needs to come down just a little in diameter. Perfect. Last thing that we need to do is get that tenon on the bottom that we're going to thread right to a half inch. And the easiest way to do that, a half inch open end wrench. So I'll score my ends and turn it right down to the right thickness. This might take a little practice for you, Tim since you've never turned before. Well, I mean, you're turning the lathe, but. And the final step, I need to round over that lip up on the top of my stick there and undercut just a little bit on the stick. And I think I'm gonna thin up that lip just a little. I know, we're almost done, Tim. You're a good boy. Perfect. A little bit of sanding. You'll need to spin it a little bit faster now, Tim. Perfect. A little bit of sanding.
and then we're ready to thread the bottom for Mr. Scrooge's candlestick. That's good, Tim. You can stop now. You're a good boy. Go sit in the corner. What I've got here is just a standard half inch threader. I've replaced the guide block on there. We counterboard it down and then put our half inch hole right in the middle. And what that does is it's going to allow us to get a lot closer to this shoulder when we thread this. So all I really need to do, set it inside here and then thread it right down until it stops. I can work back and forth and you can see the chips are ejecting there. Perfect. Time for a little final assembly. And then we take these, the whole candlestick back to Mr. Scrooge and make sure it passes muster and see if I can get home and see the family. Here's your candlestick, Mr. Scrooge, sir. Merry Christmas, Mr. Scrooge. Good night. Merry Christmas, sir. Bah, humbug. So from all of us here at No BS Woodworking, let's keep the BS out of the workshop. I'm Kyle Tevis. I'm Joseph Coniglio. I'm Matt Miller. I'm Lorraine Bender. And I'm Chuck Bender, and I'll see you next week in the workshop. Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas, everybody. Christmas, everyone. <laughs>